Welcome to the Savvy Dentist Podcast with Dr. Jesse Green, the show where great dentistry meets great business. Listen in each week as we bring you an inspiring person who will share their story, ideas, and business techniques to help you create a practice and a life you love. And now introducing your host, Dr. Jesse Green. Hi, everyone. It's Jesse Green here. Welcome back to SavvyDentist.com and to the Savvy Dentist Podcast. Great to have your company for another week and another episode of the show. Now, if you're a motivated, driven practice owner and you're looking to get more from your practice, whether it's earning a greater income or having more free time or just enjoying that journey a whole lot more, then I want to invite you to come and join us in the Savvy Dentist Facebook group. And in that group, we're going to be providing you with some resources, some tools, some strategies to help you do all of those things and a whole lot more. So all you need to do is head across to Facebook, search Savvy Dentist, find the group there. Now, please do take a moment to answer the questions that allow entry into the group because we want to make sure we've got the right people in the group. And once you've done that, we look forward to welcoming you there. So it really is as simple as one, two, three. So we look forward to seeing you there. Now, from a dental practice owner's point of view, one of the things that's coming up a lot in conversation is recruitment. If I had a dollar for every time someone had said to me recently, you know, Jesse, there's just no way I can get through this staff shortage. I'm finding it tough to recruit. There's no one looking for work. I'm understaffed. All of those sorts of things are coming up all the time. And so what I really wanted to do today was to talk about recruitment and and give you some thoughts about how to really hire like a boss because there is a process in place. There's a strategy in place uh, and there's some assets to be built. So the big problem that I see with recruitment is most practice owners see recruitment as an event rather than a process or a system. And that event is typically slapping an ad up in Seek or somewhere and hoping that people miraculously see that and apply for it. So we want to be a bit more sophisticated. We want to be a bit more intelligent about how we go about things. So today I wanted to share a few things. But before we get into the ins and outs of what to do and how to do it, I wanted to start with you know some of the problems that we see. And the first thing that we see is this belief that there's no one looking for work. And, you know, it's really easy to fall into that belief and to that mindset that no one's looking for work, therefore it's, you know, woe is me, it's all a bit tough. But at the same time, if you remember that we've heard all about the great resignation. Now, I'm talking about this in mid-2022 when we've come out of the COVID pandemic and there's been lots of talk about upheaval and transient people in the workforce and people changing jobs rapidly. So people are looking for work. The challenge is, though, is that we haven't captured their attention. So we'll talk about that in a moment. So that's the first key problem we see. The second key problem we see is that sometimes we just get the wrong person in the practice. Sometimes, yeah, there might not be a great culture fit. Uh, maybe there's a skills gap that's too hard to bridge. Uh, to bridge. And, and, you know, we just get the wrong person. And the third problem that we see you know, pretty frequently is that we hire people, but they'd never become fully productive members of the team. And so, of course, what we really want instead is we want to have people lining up to work for you. We want you to feel like Simon Cowell on The X Factor or whatever show he's on, where you get to audition people. You've got a, a line of talent and you get to choose the best of the best. And that means we're going to end up with the right people in the role, the right people in the right seat, as we like to say, and those people become productive members of the team. So as I said, it really is about seeing recruitment as a process or a system rather than an event. And the big mindset here is we've got to understand that recruitment is another form of marketing. Uh, we're used to marketing from the point of view of attracting patients to the practice, but really in this case, we're just trying to attract you know, team members or talent to the practice. And so the principles of marketing apply just as well to recruitment as they do for growing the practice with a patient base. And what we're ultimately really wanting to do here is to have you positioned as the employer of choice through our marketing efforts so that you never really need to be scrounging around, scraping the bottom of the barrel for talent. We want you to have the pick of the pick and so you get the best of the best in your practice. So there's five key elements when it comes to recruitment and and I'm going to list them out here. Uh, Now, if I was to go through all of these five elements, it'd probably be a two-day workshop um, and uh, we could we could do that another day, but on a podcast, maybe not. So anyway, here's the five key elements. So the first key element is we've got to do the groundwork. We've got to make sure we've got the foundational pieces in place. Then we've got to go through the process of advertising and hiring. And once we've done that, we need to be able to bring people into the practice and onboard them, induct them into the practice, show them our way of doing things, get them set up for success. And the next part, the fourth part is really about training and how well we train people really determines how well they become productive or how easily they become productive members of the team. So I would love to see every single practice here regard themselves as a training institution. 
And of course, our fifth key is about how well we manage people and how well we retain our best people. So we've got to be able to do that. Really what I wanted to talk today was mainly around the groundwork and a little bit of about, you know, the marketing piece. From the groundwork perspective, there's a few key things that we really need to think about. We need to know, obviously, what role we are seeking to recruit for. Now, that's probably pretty obvious. And if you've had someone leave, you'll know what you're looking to recruit for because you're replacing someone who's left. But if you're growing your practice and maybe it's a new role or or a role that uh, you've never filled before, then we need to be a little more uh, thoughtful about that. We need to know exactly what that role is going to be doing, what the outcomes of that role are, when do we want that role to commence, how many days of the week, et cetera, et cetera. What's the specifics of the role? Uh, And of course, once we've got that nailed down, we need to get clear about the position description. Uh, So exactly outlining what the role is to deliver, what the success uh, success measures are, whether it's KPIs or other outcomes we're trying to achieve. So we've got to be really clear about these things. And of course, there's a couple of logistics, you know, contracts and all that sort of stuff. Uh, You're going to want to look at your budget in in your uh, financial forecast. You want to make sure you're budgeting for that wage. You want to make sure that the wage you're budgeting for is a competitive wage. And you want to be able to budget for wage increases over time because we want you to be proactively raising pays for your team members rather than having to come to you with cap in hand. We want to be on the front foot proactively offering that. So we want to be able to factor all of those things into our financial forecasting, our budgeting, and to make sure we've got that in place. A consideration here is if you're seeking to recruit a clinician What impact will that have on the support team? Do we need to hire another DA in addition? Do we need to bring on a floater nurse or another stereo nurse or a front desk person, et cetera? So are there any other secondary roles we need to recruit for? So that's really the groundwork. But what I really wanted to start talking about today was a little more about the marketing piece because as I said, recruitment is simply marketing uh, for talent rather than marketing for patients. But the model of marketing applies. And in marketing for patients, we talk about the three M's model. So we've got the market, we've got the message, and we've got the medium. And the market is really all about how do we uh, know who we're trying to get our message to. So again, when we're looking to market for patients, we talk about our ideal patient avatar. But when we're recruiting, we talk all about our ideal applicant avatar. So there's a few key things we want to think about with our avatar. You know, their demographics. You know, how old are they? What gender are they? Do they need to live nearby? Maybe there's some hours that operate late at night, so we need people that live in the area. Uh, what core competencies and skills do they have? Uh, what experience do we want them to have? Do we want someone who's fresh out of uni or fresh out of um, school or whatever? Or do we want someone who's you know, been around a little bit longer and has a bit more experience? What sort of qualifications do we need them to have? You know, is it a Cert 3 for a DA or is it, you know, uh, a particular type of qualification we're looking for from a dentist? Do we want them to have a particular skill set? What is it that they really want from a role? So if we think about our ideal applicant avatar, what is it that they're looking for in a role? So we need to try and understand what's going on in their mind and we've got to put ourselves in their shoes. And to do that, we probably really need to understand what frustrations they might experience in their current role. So we're going to need to do a bit of market research around this. Ask other people, find out what's annoying them, find out what the frustrations are. Talk to your other team members, get them to talk to their friends and ask them about that. We also want to be clear about, you know, what sort of values and behaviours we want our our new uh, applicant to be displaying so they fit in with the culture, what philosophies or beliefs around dentistry and all of those sorts of things we need to be clear about. We're going to come up with a list of must-haves. We're going to come up with a list of nice-to-haves. But that's going to give us a really good, clear picture of our ideal applicant avatar. And this is really important because with marketing and in recruitment as well, we want to know that we're crafting a message that actually really resonates with that particular person. And it's a bit like fishing. If you're going to go out and try and catch a tuna fish, you're going to go to an area where the tuna fish generally hang out and which is where we're going to get into the medium. But we also want to put the bait in the water that tuna fish are attracted to. Now, that doesn't mean we're only ever going to catch tuna fish. We might pick up a salmon or something else. And when we craft our marketing message for our ideal applicant avatar, we might have our ideal applicant avatar certainly apply, but we might have other people not quite ideal who are still really good and they might be ideal for another role in the practice, but they might apply as well. So we're not narrowing the scope so far to exclude every single person, but we are narrowing the scope so far 
to make sure we are resonating with the right people and repelling the wrong people. So there'll be a whole bunch of people in the middle there that might come through as well. But when it comes to marketing, we've also got to start thinking about the message. And a key part of the message is really being clear about our own employer value proposition. And so we need to understand, you know, why should someone come and work with us? Why should they leave their existing job, walk past a hundred other jobs that are probably open to them to come and work for us? So we've got to be really clear about why people should come and work for us. And so when it comes to the employer value proposition, we've got to think about things like, you know, it could be career opportunities. It could be, you know, the training we provide. It could be, you know, career advancement and challenges and all those other things that allow people to grow in the role. It could be the work environment. It could be our equipment. It could be our systems. It, it could be the hours of, that we work or the location we work and the nearby amenities. It could be, of course, you know, the reputation of our practice. Maybe we have a reputation for doing great dentistry and we've got a reputation for working with high-end clientele. Or maybe we've got a reputation for doing great dentistry uh, for working families, whatever it happens to be. And of course, we're going to need to think about, you know, the remuneration and other rewards. So, you know, what is the pay structure? What sort of recognition or incentives are in place? And of course, what other leave or other entitlements are in place as well? So we've got to be clear about who our ideal applicant avatar is and what as a practice, we offer that applicant because if we can understand those two things really well, it allows us to craft a message that really resonates. And in marketing, we talk about entering the conversation that's already going on in their head. And that's a really, really important thing. And what you'll find is if we get this message right, you're going to have people line up and go, wow, this is a great place to work. Now, I was talking to one of our clients a little while ago. Uh, she lives in you know, Sydney, the northern parts of Sydney, probably just slightly out of Sydney. And she'd been going through a process with you know, advertising, getting a few lackluster uh, responses. Uh, and then we went through this exercise and we changed it around and she got 160 people lining up for an interview wanting to work with her. Similarly, another specialist practice I know also in Sydney and Metro Sydney uh, couldn't get people to join their practice and they got a great you know eight to ten to twelve applicants lining up wanting to work for them as well for the particular role and so in different roles you'll get different number of applicants depending on the type of role of course but it all came back to creating a message that really resonated with their ideal applicant avatar. Then, of course, we've got to think about where do we advertise? What's the medium we're going to be using to advertise? And so the medium, you know, for different roles will vary. You know, perhaps you might be looking at Seek or Indeed or any of those job platforms, or you might be looking at Facebook and the various groups, or you might even run a Facebook ad and, and try and advertise there. So again, we've got to be clear about that. But one of the things I want to say about the ads themselves and the reason why I think most dental practices struggle with a lot of their uh, recruitment is A, as I've already said, they don't have a process, but B, when it comes to the ad itself, most of the ads, look, I don't know how to say this any other way, but most of the ads are frankly a little bit uninspiring and bordering on boring. They're very vanilla, very repetitive. One job looks like the other. There's nothing that jumps out. There's no personality in those ads. There's nothing that really kind of jumps off the page and says, wow, that sounds like a great place to work. You can have a bit of fun with this. You can do some great things. If, you're, you know, if you've got some interests and you want to put those into the ad as well, again, use your personality and let it shine through because we are all human beings and we're looking to recruit other human beings and they have thoughts and feelings and emotions too. And they're looking for an interesting and stimulating job. And if you put your personality into these things, you will attract people. You will more than likely repel some people as well. And that's okay. But the ones you attract will be the right ones. And that's what we're looking to do is to get the right people in the right seat. So just for fun, uh, we went through an exercise a little while ago and we're looking at ways of creating ads that were just a little bit different, a little bit quirky, a little bit creative. And so we've all seen the ads that pop up on the various Facebook groups now that are getting copied and modelled and, and they're becoming a bit, I suppose, stale for want of a better word. So we wanted to create an ad that sounded like a personals ad and we wrote it from the perspective of the dental chair. You know, dental chair seeking long-term relationship, blah, 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 blah. And at the end, you know, it just said swipe right. And it was meant as a bit of fun. 
It was meant as a bit of fun. It was meant as a bit of a joke. And, of course, we got some people who had a sense of humour because having a sense of humour was important to that particular practice. In fact, it was one of their core values. It's really important that when you advertise, you do advertise in a way that is interesting uh, and it goes beyond the vanilla. I just want to say that really, really clearly because I know that a lot of us as dentists, you know, sometimes we find it hard to put our personality out there. Sometimes we feel we've got to be, you know, professional to the point of being constrained but what I'm saying to you is let your personality please shine through because, you know, that's how we're going to get people. Now, once you've got people, of course, we then need to be able to vet those applications. We now need to be able to sort those applications. You might want to go through an initial Zoom screening process. You might ask people to do a task for you. You might have other ways of vetting those applications. And you'll want to have like some selection criteria. It's a bit like with the kids at high school or even primary school, they get marking rubrics around their assignments. And you want to make sure that you've got some sort of way of comparing applicants rather than relying on gut feel. You want to have some applicant evaluation process where you can look at each applicant, mark them against a set of criteria, so you're being objective around that. So once you've then sorted that, it's really important to then go through the interview process, but it's also really, really key to understand that good applicants, the people that you're looking for, will have options. And good applicants have options in any market, but in this market in particular, and that means we need to be smart about how we interview. Now, I created a process some years ago called the Magnetic Job Offer, and it was a way of attracting people to a particular practice that was in regional Victoria. And this particular practice, you know, great practice. It was a really good practice uh, and still is a great practice. And what they were struggling with was communicating what was so good about their practice. So we had some applicants come through that would have been great, but for one reason or another, they didn't take the job. So we created this magnetic job offer. And really, in essence, it's about helping the practice also put their best foot forward so that they're almost selling themselves to the applicant as much as the applicant is selling themselves to the practice. It's a mutual sale process. And so we wanted to be able to pitch that and have a framework where we could pitch our wares to that particular applicant. So when you do go into those interviews, it's really important to understand that there is a bit of mutual selling going on there, selling the applicants selling themselves to you. And we're also selling the practice to them as a great place for them to you know, meet their needs, whether it's you know uh, career development, whether it's about earning an income or whatever it is that's important to them. We've got to understand what's important to them and we've got to show them how working at the practice is going to be able to help them fulfill those needs needs. So there you go. There's a couple of thoughts for you that I hope will help you with your recruitment process. But please understand it is all about marketing. We spoke about the five steps just to recap where there's a bit about groundwork, you know, getting prepared, getting all those things in place. We spoke a little bit today about attracting and hiring. And again, I could go on for days about that. Beyond that, which we've not really had the opportunity to talk about today, is we've got to have a process for onboarding people really well, bring them into the practice, inducting them, having great training processes in place so we can, again, have people become really competent in their roles. And then, of course, you the ability to manage people once they're in the team and then retain them as well. So, again, just to round that out, those five steps. So I hope you find that really helpful and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of the Savvy Dentist Podcast. Take good care, have a great week, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye now. Thank you for listening to the Savvy Dentist Podcast. For more episodes, go to drjessegreen.com slash Savvy Dentist. And to discover how to build a high-performance dental practice, visit drjessegreen.com and download the free report.